Hey guys, welcome to Storehouse Media. We're so excited to have you joining us this week. Our heartbeat is biblical doctrine. So we are here as a resource to provide the gospel and biblical teaching and how those two things are inseparable. Join us every week as we tackle different topics regarding faith, life, and truth. And we hope you enjoy this week's episode. Hey guys, welcome back. Storehouse Media. Uh, me and Gama on the mics, uh, Dimitri behind the camera with a big rectangular light. <laughs> uh, we got a lot going on in this office now, man. Yeah, it's, we do. It's pretty cool. Some random backpacks on the floor that you guys yeah. can't Whoa, see. Whoa, we got a lot of backpacks on the floor. <laughs> I didn't even recognize that, bro. Man. Yeah. So yeah. the Spanish side, we're going to be giving those backpacks to a community over in the Cleveland area oh, for nice. the kids going back to school. So yeah. that's awesome. That is good. That's cool. Um. Man, we're excited uh, for a few different reasons. One, because we're about to jump into scripture. That's exciting. Yeah. Uh, two, we're about to take a little three-week breather. Yeah. Um, I will be on a honeymoon, and Ooh. so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, getting married Saturday. So, well, by the time you guys listen to this, I will have been married. For two days. Yeah, for two days. Um, so that's pretty cool, but... Uh, yeah, man, we're we're excited to be here, excited for everything that's coming up, excited for being excited, right? Yeah. That's all good stuff. So um, we are in the the remainder of Second Peter chapter 3 today, um, and it's going to be verses 14 through 18, and <clears throat> I love the way Peter closes this because essentially what Peter's going to do, he's going to close this book a lot of the same way he opened it, mm. right? Um, and so as he closes it out, he's going to call us to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, but there is a little bit before that verse that we do want to touch on before we just move to this closing statement. Um, and so I'm going to read the whole passage real quick, and then we'll, we'll kind of uh, dive into it broken down. Peter says, therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found in him without spot or blemish and at peace and count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. You therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. So, uh, Peter starts us out with a therefore, and mm -hmm. essentially what that's going to do is bring us back to what we have previously spoke about last week, uh, which was that that we don't look at this delay of God's return mm. as anything other than God's patience, yes. right? And his will for all people to come to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so he warns us that instead of falling into the trap of the scoffers, we need to remember the character of God. Yeah. Right. We need to remember the character of God and who he is and what he's willing out of this. Um, and so in light of that, he says, since we are waiting for these things, we should be diligent to be found in him without spot or blemish uh, and to be found at peace. Yeah. Um, when we look at the idea of, of waiting for these things, so to speak, uh, Paul writes to us in one spot, and then the author of Hebrews as well, when it comes to waiting, Paul says in Philippians 3.20, he says, but our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so essentially what he's saying is as, as citizens of heaven, children of God adopted through Jesus Christ, uh, we are awaiting the coming of our Savior from heaven who is going to redeem all things. And so that is in light of... Uh, what Peter has previously told us, which is what we discussed last week. And then Hebrews 9, 28, he says, So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of man, will, uh, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Hmm. Right? And so that's, 
that's what in and, and even just off the top of my head uh actually let me turn there because i don't want to butcher this reference uh but when we look at salvation right it, it is essentially um galatians 5 5 for through the spirit by faith we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness mm. right that's I, one of the marks of the believer i think is our waiting for Christ's return, our waiting uh, for the fullness of righteousness, like what he says in the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, uh, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied, mm-hmm. right? And so that's a, th- when we look at our at ourselves and our, our, our place as believers, awaiting for the second coming, awaiting for the return of Christ, uh, we are looking to the heavens and eagerly hoping for and awaiting the day when he will restore all things. Yeah. Now he does give us something to do in the meantime of that waiting. And it's like we talked about last week, right? Again, this is, this is Peter's conclusion. Ultimately, uh, he calls us to strive for holiness and for peace essentially. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now as mentioned before, um, Peter's closing the same way he's opening, yeah. right? And so he starts out the letter after he explains the promises of God and all these rich, beautiful things that God's given us in uh, chapter one, verses three and four. In verse five, he says, for this reason, make every effort to supplement your faith mm. with, right? And Gamma, like you so well pointed out, that make every effort yeah. matters. Yeah. It really matters. He doesn't say make some effort. He doesn't say be passive in what you're doing, but make every effort mm-hmm. to supplement your faith with. And then he goes on through this list of things that we're supplementing in order for spiritual growth. Um, and so there is a striving inside the Christian faith. Uh, Hebrews twelve fourteen. he says, strive for peace with everyone. And so he says peace in this verse as well, uh, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord, Mm. right? Uh, And there's also a spot, I think it's 2 Corinthians 7. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. So... All that being said, yeah. uh, there is, as we wait, we should be motivated to be putting off the deeds of the body, mm-hmm. uh, to be striving toward holiness, to be diligent in that, and to be making every effort for our spiritual growth in Christ likeness. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it reminds me, I was, I was reading this morning about um, the parable of the vineyard yeah. and how um, the the owner of the field went and go went to go find workers. And if you know the moral of the story, basically there were different times throughout the day where the owner went and hired workers, mm-hmm. but all of them received the same reward. Yeah. And so, you know, you know, Jesus was giving this parable to make us understand that there's going to be people that come to the faith earlier. There's going to be some people that can come, come in later and the reward is the same, mm-hmm. which is eternal life, which yeah. is what he had told Peter previously. And it just reminds me, like, for those of us that are have already, in a sense, been hired, we've already been given the task, we have not yet received our reward, so like the first workers, we're working. Yeah. The only people in the parable that were doing nothing were the people who had not yet been called. Right. And so this should encourage us that if we've been called, we're called to work. Yeah. Until the end of the day when we receive our wage, which I don't want to say wage like we earned salvation right. but in a sense salvation was already going to be given to us and god's calling us to work while we wait for that yeah. reward yeah absolutely and along with that because i think you did mention something that i would like to touch on and it's kind of in our notes here even the people hired at the end of the day mm-hmm. who put in maybe an hour of work yeah they received the same pay mm-hmm. right why because the premise of salvation, the foundation of salvation is based on faith in Jesus Christ, yeah. right? And so the rewards we receive, uh, uh, the kingdom of heaven is all purchased for us by his merit. Yeah. And so with that, I do want to touch on the idea that when we look at holiness and when we look at peace, we need to first find uh, that we do have holiness and peace by faith, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I, 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 and the reason I want to talk about that is because... 
if we don't use that as the as the basis, mm -hmm. then we find ourselves in a place of trying to become something that maybe we have not yet been made, right? Mm -hmm. It's like we're still a, a corpse uh, attempting to bring ourselves to life, when yeah. in reality, if we've been brought to life in Christ, uh, from that place of new birth, we are able to live this out. Yeah. And so... Um, Ephesians 1, 4, it says, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him, right? So their holiness and blamelessness attributed to us and only because we were chosen in Christ, right? So it's not, it's not because we labored for it. It's not because we did anything to attain it. It's simply, uh, by grace that we have received holiness and blamelessness, uh, Colossians 1 verses 21 and 22, and you who once were alienated and hostile in mind doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in the body of his flesh by his death. Why? In order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. Hmm. So there it is again, uh, the title of holiness uh, and blamelessness and the fact that there is no reproach to be brought against us before God because of what Christ has accomplished, right? And mm -hmm. that is received by faith. Hebrews 10, 14, for by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified or those who are being made godly, as some translations would put it. Yeah. And so once again, when we look at holiness and godliness and being above reproach and being blameless and, and being perfected and all these different things, we need to realize first and foremost that we have that before God immediately yeah. by faith in Jesus Christ. Immediately. Mm. It is not a process any longer. Uh, that comes immediately. Yeah. And then on peace, a similar thing, Romans 5, 1, he says, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I say all that to say this. If by faith in Jesus Christ, you have received holiness, blamelessness, uh, uh, full perfection, and peace, mm -hmm. then from a place of having received that, live it out. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's an important thing. We we labor from the cross, not for the cross. Exactly. Um so yeah, I don't know if you want to touch on that one. Gunner. No, I think we're good. That that's that's spot on. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. spot on. <clears throat> um so now we're gonna get into a, a section of it really quickly, verses fifteen and sixteen, um, where things are gonna get a little controversial. <laughs> um, verses 15 and 16, he says, and count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given him as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. Essentially, Peter's saying that we should count the patience of God as salvation. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's saying, basically, I'm not the only other person saying this, but mm. Paul also writes to you about this stuff. Yeah. Right? So so Peter makes mention of Paul as an apostle, validates his ministry and the things that he's been saying. Uh, and then he goes on uh, halfway through verse 16. He says, there are some things in them that are hard to understand. Now, that, I want to sit on that for a second. Yeah. Uh, because that is actually one of the biggest, um, cruxes, so to speak, that the Mormon church stands on mm. for the book of Mormon, mm. uh, for the additional books that, uh, I almost said Joseph Prince, he's a heretic too, but, uh, uh, Joseph Smith found, <laughs> right. That the angels led him to golden yeah. tablets, so on and so forth, um, that those were given, because so much of what Paul says is hard to understand. Mm. And so these were given in order for us to be able to understand what Paul was saying better. Because the Bible's hard to understand, the Book of Mormon was added on. Joseph um, Smith doesn't even like Paul. Right. He says in the intro of um, Doctrines of the Church or something like that, one of the. Yeah. Uh, he, he literally talks about. Paul has no validity mm. to be boasting about anything. If anyone has validity to boast, it's him. That's insane. I think that's insane. That is insane. But here's the thing, guys. Listen. Now, I probably have a little bit of... Chelsea and I were just talking about this the other day. I probably have a little bit of extra um, bitterness that needs to be worked on 
toward the Mormon religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and the reason that I think it most stained my mouth, um, when I, you know, I, I've shared on here multiple times that I sat down with Mormon elders for some four hours yeah. uh, and discussed doctrine. And where I, one, one thing that had, re- I mean, it was straight up appalling. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sitting across the table from four of them. And they're going through their spiel, right? Yeah. They're doing their thing of, you know, their little lead you to the gospel yeah. message. One of the guys is talking, and I'm not kidding. He stops in the very middle of his sentence, and the guy next to him just picks up and, and continues speaking. And I'm like, <laughs> what the heck? So that, I didn't say anything about it. Five minutes in, same thing. That dude now stops speaking in the middle of a sentence. This guy just picks up where he left off. <laughs> And so when he finishes, I said, well, hey, it's obvious that y'all have really practiced through this and memorized what y'all are going to say. And I kid you not. The guy goes, what do you mean? I said, well, you know, twice I watched one of y'all stop talking middle of the sentence, you don't pick up. He goes, well, no, it's just the Holy Spirit. And I mean, fumes. Oh. Coming out of my ears and nose, I was so angry. Yeah, especially when you understand that what they're saying is not in accordance to scripture. Yeah. And then I don't want to say nothing that I shouldn't, but that's probably the closest thing we've got of blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because yeah. if you look at blasphemy of the Holy Spirit in the Bible, it was attributing to Satan what was the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, I, you know, I'm just like, you guys know for a fact. You have rehearsed that down to a T (laughs) and you're lying to me and telling me, no, this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Like how stupid do I look to you? And where in the scriptures do we see that that's even how the Holy Spirit functions in ministry, right? Like, I mean, legitimate anger toward them in that moment. And, and smoke started coming out of your ears. I was so (laughs) mad. Because they're abusing the third person of the Trinity yeah. for their own gain. Yeah. And so I was so I was so mad at him. But one of the things they had told me is as I as I was asking him, hey, what you know, what's the point of the Book of the Mormon in the first place? That this is the scripture they gave me. Oh. Right? Well, well, Paul's, you know, Paul's stuff is hard to hard to understand, so we need it. And I'm going, man, but Peter says it's hard to understand uh for those who are ignorant and unstable. And because they're that, they twist it to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. And that's exactly what Joseph Smith and the Mormon religion does in the first place. They twist it to their own destruction. Um, The fact of the matter is, by the spirit of God and the word of God, it is sufficient. Right? It is sufficient. Uh, and, And, you know, people will say, well... So we can just, because, you know, you, you get into like first John, uh, when John says that we don't need anyone to teach us for the anointing we have teaches us. Some people will take that and go, oh, see, so I can interpret the Bible. However, because the Holy Spirit's giving me interpretation mm. false, uh, the spirit of God has been working through the church for the last 2000 years. Yeah. And so if you want to know it, it it's, th- this is not to say that we don't need people to teach us. But what you need to do is sit under guys who have studied the Bible, yeah. right? And have learned the doctrines of scripture oh, yeah. and who can back up what they're teaching by what scripture says, oh, yeah. right? Uh, and, and here, let me do that really quick. Just for some of you guys who are like, well, Daniel, you know, you're saying all this about Mormons, but I don't see you backing up what you're saying. Um, okay. So Paul writes things way too complicated. So we need the book of Mormon to be able to understand it. Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 13. For we not we are not writing to you anything other than what you read and understand, and I hope you I hope you will fully understand. Mm. There's no hidden values to it. There's yeah. no hidden meaning. Mm-mm. It says exactly what it says. There's nothing in between the lines. No. So we don't need a Book of Mormon to be able to help us understand what Paul said. Mm-hmm. What we need, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna ask you, did you um ask them? Any examples of something that was hard to understand that the Book of Mormon clears up? The only thing they had mentioned was uh, 1 Corinthians 15. I don't know if we'll find this fast enough. Mm. Uh, where Paul talks about the different glories of the celestial beings. You know, the, the yeah. glory of the sun, the glory of the moon, the glory of the stars. And oh. they explained how that had something to do 
with us becoming gods of our own planet. Oh, that's right. bad. I know. And I'm like, I mean, if we want to use the Bible to interpret the Bible, Satan was the one that promised if we eat of the fruit, we'll become God. And mm. so if your religion also promises me deity, I know where it came from, right? Yeah. It came from Satan. It is a doctrine of demons. And so... Bro, there is so much twisted stuff inside yeah. the Mormon religion that I and, and and you know I had a we did a Q and A here one night, um, and these guys show up, Mormon elders show up because of a miscommunication. They thought it was we were all going to get to give up, get up and share our different belief systems. Mm. Uh, to which I met them outside and told them there was a misunderstanding. They don't have to stay, but they can if they want to. Yeah, but I did tell them. Uh, I will not let a Mormon stand up and preach their heresy to my kids. Uh, to which he said, well, you know, hey, every denomination is different. And I said, you're not a denomination, you're a false doctrine. Yeah. Right? Like, th there's a big difference. Yeah. And I say it as gently as I can to. I'm not trying to offend them, but they yeah. need to understand. Yeah. They're horribly abusing the scriptures. Yeah. Uh, and if someone doesn't tell them, if we just go, no, you're a Christian too, then they never know the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, we damn them to hell. And yeah. then we, sh I think, damn ourselves. Yeah. Um, so anyway, all that being said, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and beat up the Mormon religion. Yeah. I mean, I do want to beat up the Mormon religion. I don't want to beat up Mormons. Yeah. But, um, man, scripture does interpret scripture. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. And, and, and for anyone who's like, well, how do I know how to get it there? I'll give you two very easy tools to be able to use scripture to interpret scripture. One is called a concordance. Um, a concordance is beautiful. It'll show you, you look up a word in it, and it'll show you every single spot in the entire Bible where that word is used. Yeah. Secondly, a treasury of scriptural knowledge, also known as a TSK. Mm -hmm. The TSK, uh, like what we did in the in this first verse of mm -hmm. the, today, yeah. we gave cross-references to follow that same theme. That's what a treasury of scriptural knowledge does. It gives you cross-references to follow the same theme so that you're using the Bible to interpret the Bible. Yeah. Uh, and it's intended to do that because the Old Testament is a is a is a foreshadow of what would come in the new, yeah. right? They interpret each other perfectly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I say, well, let's say this: you you don't need you don't need the Book of Mormon. You don't need the heresy of the of the Mormon Church. Uh, and please, guys, anytime they reference this stuff to you, I, I all I want is I want I want to be able to to equip you in a way that when they say things like that, you can go. Nah, man, I've I've heard this before, and I know mm -hmm. how to respond. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I don't know, Gama, if you got anything on that. Yeah, and 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 th this is being said mainly about the Mormons, but this happens with a lot of people yeah. who put on the Christian label, like yeah. straight up, they call themselves pastors, they call mm -hmm. themselves prophets, apostles, whatever it may be, and that's exactly what they do. They use and and what they'll do is they'll sort of like use a verse. And then explain it how they feel they want mm. to explain yes. it, and so that's exactly it. They're they're twisting, um, they're ignorant and they're unstable, and they're twisting it to their own destruction. Yeah. And so I would say, like, for people, especially people that are hungry for for more knowledge, I just encourage like be very careful. Mm -hmm. You know, always always take recommendations from people who are. Um, trustworthy yes you know yeah. and so if you know we've given plenty of recommendations on this podcast and i would say don't waste your time with preachers that are concerned for your well-being right. here on earth right invest your time and your ears and your heart on preachers that are invested in your well-being in eternity. eternity yeah in eternity yeah. and so um, there's all these mega church pastors, all these prosperity pastors that are just trying to get you to understand that you can do it. You can, you can be a very successful person here on this earth. No, like that's, that's not the point. Yeah. And so although it can, it can really tickle your ears and scratch that itch that you have, don't do it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Why do you want to fluff yourself up for what? You right. know? So always go to the preachers that are preaching truth, that are uh, expositing scripture. Yeah. I mean, we we I mean, this podcast was topical at first. Yeah. But we derived topics through expositing scripture. Mm -hmm. Always find preachers that read the Bible first 
and then talk about the topic they want to talk about rather than bringing a topic and just saying, yeah, these all these Bible verses back up what I'm trying to say. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Which is why we chose to do, we're finishing this season, but which is why we chose to do Second Peter this way so that we can exposit scripture and yeah. bring the topics that need to be brought. We talked about false gospels. Mm-hmm. We've talked about the Mormon religion. We've talked about a lot what did I say? False gospels. We've also talked yeah. about false prophets. Oh yeah. We've named people as well. Yeah. But all this through expositing scripture. Yeah. When someone exposits scripture, it becomes a lot more difficult for that person to twist scripture. Yeah. People who twist scripture usually use a verse or two. Yes. Which is why the Mormons use that verse, but they don't want to go into that little second half of verse right, sixteen. Right. You know, they yeah. won't mention that. Yeah. They won't. Yeah. Well, and. and They'll be too nice in air quotes because yeah. they don't want... Because essentially what they're saying is if you're not following the Book of Mormon, you're the one that's ignorant and unstable mm. and twisting it to their to your own destruction. Yeah. They're too nice to say that yeah. uh, because essentially what they want is to buy you in, Yeah. right? Uh, and I'll just say this. I was going to save this for the last verse, but I can say it now. It didn't really matter. Um, I'll say it again then too. But um, when I sat down with them... I had never studied Mormonism. Mm. I didn't really know anything about it. Mm. Uh, I knew some stuff about they thought we'd become gods of our own planet. Special underwear. Yeah, special underwear. You know, weird stuff like that, but that's a weird thing. What is that? It's a weird thing, bro. Um, But that's kind of, you know, they have these, these, I I, I knew some some stereotypes, basically. Okay. Um, But... I did not need to study Mormonism to sit down yeah. and refute their doctrine. Because you knew the truth doctrine. so well. Yeah, I knew the scriptures so well that yeah. everything they would say, I'd go, wait a minute. What mm-hmm. about, you know, X, Y, Z from Paul or or this from Moses or yeah. this from, and they're like, uh, and by the end of it, they literally said, I, I kid you not, I've never met a Christian like you. That's what they told me. I said, what? One with the Holy Spirit, right? Is that the problem? You just sit down and debate people who have never read the scriptures, you freaking bully? You know, like, I get so mad about it, man. <laughs> but it's true, you know? It, I, yeah. They did it to one of my friends, Justin, man, at, at, at Lone Star College. He he doesn't. He's not very social, and so they, they basically cornered him up against a wall, man. Yeah. And he's like... You know, he's looking down and, and they're just hitting him. I had to get out of the car and go get him. Yeah. And I and you know, I'm I'm like running them off. They're buzzards, man. Yeah. That was mean, I apologize. But <laughs> I get mad. Um, so I take that back. I repent. Uh, <laughs> so uh verse seventeen, he says, In in light of this, you therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. Now, because Paul's saying, because we know this in advance, because some of the things taught can be difficult and people aren't putting in the work to study, like when the Bereans were exhorted, or not exhorted, um, commended, because they heard what Paul preached and they went back to search the scriptures to know whether it was true, a lot of people don't want to put that work in. And so he says, because you know that some of that stuff is, is, can, can be difficult to comprehend, take care that you're not carried away with the error of lawless people, yeah. right? Um, now, I, I want to do something really quick. I want to define what does it mean to be a lawless person? Mm. Because at this point, we might think, well, whoever is moral or whoever is in ministry is not a lawless person, right? Mm. We think moral people aren't lawless. Jesus defines lawlessness perfectly well in Matthew chapter 7, oh, verses yeah. 21 and 23. Yeah. I like it. He starts out, he says, not he says, uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, 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 will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my father who's in heaven. Mm-hmm. Right? So there's the first part. Just saying I'm Lord does not get you into the kingdom of heaven. Doing the will of my father is what gets you into heaven. Yeah. To which those people retort, Lord, we, Lord. Look at all we did. Yeah. Do we 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 prophesied in your name, we cast out demons in your name, we did many miraculous works in your name. What do you mean? Do the will of your father, we did it. Yeah. Right? We did it all in your name. Yeah. Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. lawlessness. Right? What makes them lawless? What makes them lawless is everything that they did in their ministerial work was not done in adoration and in praise and in worship of Jesus Christ, but it was done for their own sake, for their own glory, for their own kingdom, Mm -hmm. for their own salvation. Yeah. Right? That's one thing I'm teaching tonight in the youth ministry on Martha and Mary. Yeah. Right? And one thing you catch different in in Luke 10. 
Jesus comes in the house, house, Martha is busy, right? <laughs> Just serving constantly, yeah. serving, serving, serving. And it says that she was distracted mm. with much serving, but Mary just yeah. sits at the feet of Jesus, listening to his teaching. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's not to say don't serve. Yeah, it's just to say don't don't misplace service. Yeah, with don't, just sitting and worshiping. Don't miss the point right. of why you're even serving. Right, and so Martha's distracted with much serving, and how many people? hear the message of the gospel, right? Maybe find their place in ministry, set aside Christ to do their ministry, to do their ministry. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest, that, that's happened to me before. Yeah. Where I put Christ to the side to carry mm-hmm. out what I need to do for ministry. Yeah. yeah. Listen, man. And all in the name of Jesus. Yeah. All I think, I think the mark of someone who is lawful yeah. is their adoration toward Christ. But yeah. And I think it's interesting too because I was reading also in Acts and in Paul's second missionary journey, he was trying to go to Asia, but he said, "But the Holy Spirit didn't let me." Mm-hmm. I tried going to this place; the Holy Spirit didn't let me. Yeah. He could have well said, "I went to these places and I preached the gospel," yeah. but it wouldn't have been according to God's yeah. will. And so, like, even though you could say you're doing the Lord's work. It doesn't mean it's the Lord's will, yeah. you know, because the, the Lord wants us to do things in a specific way. I could pick up all the responsibilities, all the ministry, ministry opportunities. It doesn't mean I'm doing the will of the Father. Yeah. Like, what if I just pick up, um, just for example, this ministry that they offer at church? I'm, like, I'm going to do the Lord's will. But what if the Lord's will is for me not to be serving at a church, but for me to be light, maybe right. at my job, right. you know, to be able to evangelize to people on my job and put all my effort, my yeah. focus on that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we're not the ones to choose what our gift is. We're not right. the ones to choose who, what our ministry yeah. is. And we don't choose how we're going to honor Christ. Exactly. Right? Yeah. We give. We work with what he's given us to honor him. Yeah. So all that being said, uh, I, I wanted to touch on that because one thing you could hardly say about a Mormon is that they seem lawless, right? They follow a b- oh, yeah. bazillion rules for their own salvation. But the reality is there's no adoration of the person of Jesus Christ because they don't know him. Yeah. Right? And so that's got to be said about every false doctrine, every false teacher, every false religion in the entire world. Yeah. Um, I really like what uh, Peter says right here. It says um, that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose mm, your own stability. Yeah. And that's very, very important because I, 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 I've heard this before. Is like if you don't know what you stand for or stand on, you'll fall for yeah. anything. Yeah. And, and it's true. Very foolish things can seem logical if someone structures it the right way. Yeah. If you are not firm on the word of God, an atheist will come and take you like that. Yeah. Because they can make it seem... So me and Demetri were just talking about this today. There are a lot of foolish things that can sound very smart. Right. And so yeah. you got to know what you stand on. I've mentioned this before. I'll mention it again. But when you work as a bank teller and you're, try- and you're in charge of mm. figuring out real bills between counterfeit, counterfeit yeah. you don't spend all your time figuring out all the fake ones. You spend your time investing yourself in knowing what a real one is, what the qualities are, how it should look, how it should do this, that. When you invest all your time in that, anything that comes your way, you are be like, that's fake. Yeah. You don't even have to know the types of fake paper that exists, yeah. the type of fake ink that exists. You don't have to know any of that. You know it's real. And that's why you know, you didn't even know anything about Mormonism, mm-hmm. and you were able to have a four-hour conversation with them because you knew the truth yeah. so well, you could identify counterfeit. Yeah. You know? Very quickly. Yeah. yeah. And that's bringing us to the final closing point, verse 18. Uh, but... Right. So instead of losing your way with lawless people, falling from your own stability, instead of being able or uh, unstable and ignorant and twist to, to destruction, instead of those things, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. So what is what is Peter's instead of mm. grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ? Mm. You don't you like I remember when I was in the in the cult I was in. Yeah big fanatics of studying demonology in order to cast out demons. And I'm like, so you're studying the demonic. Why? And like, what true literature do we even know that we have about the demonic, right? The Bible says very little. Very little. Yeah. So other than they're liars. (laughs) So I don't know what exactly you're studying. And if you ask me, that could very quickly become a form of worship because now you're just upset. I mean, people would brag. I studied demonology for 15 years and I'm like, I don't know that I would be 
bragging about anything like that. You what know? were your sources? Right. You know, this isn't the the show Supernatural. You yeah. know, like it. So I just I when I think about that. And when I think about the Mormon church, you know, all these different things, I just stop and I go, man, I could, I could refute all of these answers Mm. simply because of growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. The end. Yeah. Right. And so that's, but again, that's Peter's opener also. Remember Mm -hmm. uh, verse two, it's his prayer. May grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. He opened with it, and now he's closing with it. Yeah. And so we need to keep in mind, when, when we look at at Second Peter, mm-hmm. it is sandwiched. Every, the, yeah. So it's a lot of meat, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but between uh, verse 2 and verse, uh, ch- uh, chapter 1, verse 2, and, and uh, chapter 3, verse 18, that's a lot of slices of meat. A lot. Probably a lot of cheese, too, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe some veggies, but... Maybe. The fact of the matter is the bread, what holds that sandwich together yeah. is that we grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ, which means if you want to combat all false doctrines, all scoffers, uh, you want to grow in, in your sanctification, all of it, every single thing that you are hoping to attain in the Christian life comes from this one thing, grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and that's even what Paul says in, um, Second Corinthians three eighteen, and we all with unveiled face behold the glory of the Lord are being transformed, right? From beholding the glory of the Lord, we're being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. Mm. And so by beholding the glory of the Lord, we grow yeah. to be like the Lord. Yeah, and just like if you try eating a sandwich without one of the pieces of bread. It's going to fall apart. Yeah. If you try to tackle everything that he said without sticking to growing in the knowledge of Christ, yeah. it's going to fall apart. Yeah. You're not going to be able to tackle false gospels. You're not going to be able to tackle false prophets without you first holding everything together by growing in the knowledge of Christ. Yeah. Absolutely, man. So I, I want to close it there because Peter closes it there. I don't know if yeah. you have anything else you want to add on to that. No, I think I'm good too. All right. Well, then we're going to uh, we're gonna close here. I'm going to pray and then we're, we'll have you know, two or three weeks off. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll be kicking down your doors again, uh, yeah. with some more biblical truth. Right. Yep. And we'll be back in your ears then. Yeah. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, uh, for this short time in second Peter, Lord, we thank you for all the truth that's in it. And we thank you, um, father for your, for the word you've given us, uh, for the scriptures. We thank you for the spirit, um, who by them, Lord, we cannot be lost. They hold us in your hands so firmly that none can snatch us out. So we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy toward us, Lord. We are undeserving of all of it, all of it. Because if your hand of grace was not on us, we would be the scoffers. We would be the false teachers. uh, We would be all the things that the Bible so condemns. But we receive your grace and we thank you for that. Uh, We thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ who shed his blood to make the atonement, to pay the debt for our sin and to satisfy your wrath against us, to make us holy and blameless and above reproach before you. And we ask that he be praised in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we'll see y'all soon. See y'all next week. Not next week. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening. We hope this podcast has served as a blessing to you. If you want to contact us or want more information, visit our website at storehousemedia.org or follow us on all social media platforms at Storehouse Media. Until next time, grace and peace.